I made this little animation to show what keyframes do in After Effects and what they look like in After Effects. So you can see I have these uh, various little shapes up here on top. Uh, I tell you how the keyframe is starting. For example, this one starts with just a normal keyframe and ends with a normal keyframe. Very robotic. That's down here on the bottom. See? A normal keyframe and a normal keyframe. Now, in order to change these keyframes, I'm going to hit spacebar to stop playback. And you would right click this keyframe here and you would go to keyframe assistant and you could do something like easy ease or ease in or ease out. And it's always a little hard to know which one does what. So that's why I made this. So if you do easy ease, it will turn into uh, this uh, hourglass looking keyframe here. And it also changes the way the keyframes look up here. If you look at the red, I, I have something superimposed underneath it so you could could see that. But that's how you change a keyframe. I'm going to undo that so that it doesn't mess up my setup here. I'm going to hit play again so it's kind of playing through for you. So normal keyframes just look like little diamonds. These are easy ease keyframes here that look like uh, uh, hourglass shapes. Here's a normal one, a normal one. So I've kind of tried to show you all the different ways that these keyframes work. So this one is very robotic. This one here, the second layer, has a easy ease, so it kind of, you can see the dots. This represents every frame. And you can see that it's moving very slowly as it progresses through these little dots, which are the frames, and then it gets to kind of a normal pace. And then as it eases to a close, there's more and more dots as it sort of chills. So I call it chilling. It sort of chills to start, and watch this chill. Kind of chills to end. Here's one more time. Here comes the purple one. It's coming over. Chill. All right, so that's the point of easing is to make it so your keyframes don't move so robotically. Here's normal keyframe here. It starts with the, without anything fancy, just an even pace movement, but then it eases into this position. See all these little dots? Meaning that it's going to slow down as it gets there. Slow. See that? It slows down. Here's a normal keyframe and then easing out. Boom, nothing. So that kind of shows me, sometimes I get confused as to which ones ease in and ease out. So this kind of helps me see that easing out is not really doing anything at the end keyframe here as it moves across the stage. Uh, here's easy ease in, doesn't do anything either at the beginning. And a normal keyframe, of course, doesn't do anything either at the end. So that's just the same as normals up here. So if you start them, you know, it depends on which one you use. Now this one, easy ease out, is great because there's a whole bunch of dots here meaning that it's going to start slow and this one I actually put on a toggle on and off keyframe for, so it stops moving and then it goes back to normal okay so if you look down here here is the uh, easing out it looks kind of like a, that kind of helps you see that, that it's sort of pointing and getting bigger as it goes to the right meaning it's starting slow and getting faster as it goes to the right that might be the easiest way to remember. So it starts with a little tiny point with tons and tons of little dots, and it gets wider, meaning the dots are spreading out as this keyframe uh, widens out here. And then I also right-clicked here and did keyframe assistant, and I did actually I did toggle hold keyframe, which created a toggling keyframe on there. Let's see if I did it. I just changed it, so let's see if it still does it. Yeah, it's still doing it. So that's called toggle hold keyframe. And if you add in another one over here, another toggle hold keyframe, then it releases it. So you can, can set it up so that it stops. See this green one here? It's stopping and it's holding and holding. And all of a sudden, once it hits this other toggle keyframe, it releases and it's able to move the rest of the way across the stage. So that's a very interesting set of keyframes. Uh, that I've used occasionally just to pause something for a little bit. It does not change how long it takes to move across the screen because it's going to arrive at around four seconds anyway, but it does pause it for a little while. Now, uh, this is probably the best one of all because you've got a bunch of little keyframes to begin with, and then it widens out, it'll play sort of normally, and then it will start to slow, 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 slow down as more and more keyframes are condensed at the point of this thing. So that's the uh, yellow one I have highlighted there. Let's play through that so you can see that. See, it kind of chills as it starts, 
and chills as it ends. It chills as it starts, it goes to a normal speed, and then chills as it ends. That's a really good one there for almost any purposes to start and ease out as you begin and an ease in as you end. All right, that's this yellow one down here, and it looks like this. See these two keyframes? That's probably the best one of all. This one here will uh, start with a kind of a dense bunch of slowing moving. Uh, the orange square will move slowly. It'll speed up, and it'll just go normal and just thunk to the end, thunk at the end. So these are a whole bunch of different kinds of keyframes here and a whole bunch of uh, different results. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit on the top so you can watch this as it plays through a little bit more and just take note of uh, the little dots here and how they uh, correspond to the speed or the slowness really when you see more dots it means slower and you can see how it corresponds as these move across the screen for a little while. A lot of times you're going to want to move your position and your scale keyframe you're going to want to use the same type of uh, easy easing or easing. If you add it onto one keyframe, you might as well add it onto many of them. That's kind of the tip for that. Okay, so I've shown you what the keyframes look like as they move across the screen. You see this uh, one down here. Let's solo this. I'm going to hit the little solo button here. So that all we see is this orange square kind of chills as it starts. In other words, eases out. And it chills as it ends, in other words, eases in, all right? And if I kind of pause it and click on it, you'll see it has uh, this nice little dotted line here that shows how it is going to go slow at first. It'll speed up, and then it'll go slow as it ends, right? But let me show you one other cool thing here. What you can do is you can actually edit this layer here. Uh, in a more graph-like way. If you turn on this little blue uh, button here, this little include this property in the graph editor set, then what you do is you come over here to this button and show your graph editor. So you can kind of assign what's going to show up on this. So this is what this looks like. See, there's a whole bunch of, of frames in the beginning here as we're kind of at the beginning of its motion. A whole bunch of frames and then as it uh, gets going it goes at a steady pace and then up here it starts to chill and get slower and slower and slower until it finally arrives at this end point here but yeah you can zoom in on it a little bit more here you can actually come in and modify these a bit you could sort of tell it to start later you can ch kind of chill the curves out a little bit you can even add in another keyframe and to another uh, point on here. If I look under my pen tool, I can actually sort of draw on this curve. So this is something that you may want to experiment with here. See, I put a plus on there and then I hit V to get the selection tool. And you can sort of make it really chill out. See how many more frames are now being created over on the right side of that graph? So this is going to go slow, then super fast, not super fast, but fast. And then it's going to really take a long time to slow down because I've ch even further chilled out this curve here. So let's see how this plays. I'm going to hit play. So it's going fast and then really takes a long time to arrive at its final destination. Fast, slow. Fast, slow. Okay, so that kind of is a very fascinating way of coming in and editing the actual curve and changing how these things move across the stage. Let's do a super exaggerated slowness here. It's going to take a real long time to arrive at the, arrive at the end there. Play, move fast, slow. Fast, slow. You know, I can I can change this back by right clicking here and just making this into a keyframe assistant. If, and if you want to get rid of easy ease, ease in, ease out, you want to get rid of all that. It's sort of like, well, how do I turn that off? Well, the way to turn it off is to go to keyframe interpolation. This gets you a little bit deeper into it. So you hit keyframe interpolation. It says whatever you have currently set is the way it's going to be. Well, I can change this and say linear and linear. And then hit OK, and look, it's going to make it just like really sharp now. So now it's back to a normal 
boring keyframe. If I turn off the graph, you're going to see that it's been changed into a normal boring keyframe. See this graph editor button? I'll turn that off. Normal boring keyframe right there. Let me turn that back on for a second and hit play, and it should go. We're going to start out instantly, fly across the screen, and take a long time to chill into where it stops. Starts out fast, long time to chill out to where it stops. One last thing that's kind of fun to play with, you can actually draw on these uh, paths and change them. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to hit pause here. I'm going to select this first shape here. I'm going to turn off my little guide that I created here so that you can see the actual path that I'm working on. See how I have a shy, bunch of shy layers here? What that is is the shy guy basically you turn it on if you don't want to see something you hit this little button here and it makes it shy and so it kind of disappears i'll do it on this one down here see how it kind of disappeared so now all those guys are shy but back to this one here i can actually get up here with my uh you know pen tool or whatever and i can actually click here and add a point and i can actually start to kind of Pull it and move it around at another point here and I can pull that and move that around you can do all sorts of interesting things with the motion of this based on actually drawing on these objects and pulling these points around on your stage it's a pretty pretty fantastic uh, thing you can do so let's solo that and then see what the motion looks like here I want to hit play so see how it's moving and doing some crazy stuff now? It's all based on that shape that I just drew with the pen tool, which changed that beautiful little path that shows me where all the frames are. Here it is. Let me hit pause. See that beautiful path that shows where all the keyframes are? You can pull them apart and condense them like that or uncondense them. You can also uh, right-click it and say, keyframe interpolation rove across time which kind of evens out so all the dots even out see that let me undo that so you can see what it looked like before see how these were really dense and then as soon as i add in that rove across keyframe it spreads them out so it'll still move smoothly through that keyframe right there so that's called rove across time keyframe it looks like this see that so it's pretty interesting all the cool things you can do with uh, grabbing these paths here. Let's play that. It should go really slow and then speed up right about there and speed up. All right. So you get a lot of really great things that creates more keyframes down here that you can play with. You can kind of see what those keyframes look like that I drew on there. One last thing I thought I should show you is what it looks like when you turn on motion blur here. Motion blur creates a little blur on the object so it doesn't look so darn perfect. Take a look at how they look right now. They're very perfect and clean. And in reality, a lot of times when you're working in After Effects, you're purposely trying to make things look blurry. Kind of make a nice little effect here. It'll, it'll make it look like reality, essentially. So that's this button here, this motion blur, see? So I am going to do Control-A to select all of them and turn that on and it is working on rendering it. You can kind of see when they're moving fast, they're a little bit blurry. See this one? He's moving a little faster, so he's actually a little blurrier. Same with this one. When they're not moving fast, and they actually have a lot of dots like down here, they're usually very sharp looking. See? See how that one's kind of sharp? Now as it goes a little faster, it's going to get a little blurrier. Uh, this one up here, you know, I should probably just make one that's just super fast for you so you can kind of see the effect of the blur. In fact, I think I'll do that as soon as this renders. So there are now some blurs on these little squares. When they really get moving, the blur really shows up. So this, well, all of them are selected, so let me uh, deselect them first. And then I'll solo that layer. There we go. So this is what it uh, looks like with a little bit of blur on it right now. Let me hit play here so it will render it out. See how it's kind of got a decent amount of blur in it? Let's get it to go super fast here across the screen. We'll get it to go really fast. 
by pulling that keyframe in and pulling this keyframe in like this. I'll pull it, just pull it over like that. So it's going to be going really fast here, and then it's going to start slowing down here. So let's see what that will do here. This will be like really slow here, and this will be super fast between here and here will be super fast because there's very few dots, okay? Let's make sure motion blur is still on. It is on right here, see? Motion blur. So now let's hit the play button and see what happens. See blurry? Not very blurry. Blurry, not very blurry. All right, let's make it even faster here. We'll make it super fast to here and super slow to here. We should see even more of a contrast. Super blurry, no blur, hardly at all. So that's a really interesting thing you could do, super blur, no blur at all. You can even go in and change those settings if you want to make it even more blurry. Those are a bunch of fun tips, ways to move things across screen and make them look uh, more realistic and a little less robotic. That's why you want to mess with these keyframes and try all these variations out and get used to them down here.